and hearing the sound of the shofar, amen. People wake up in the morning. Come on, come on. You're not morning people. Amen. Be honest with yourself. Morning is not your thing. Okay? Love to hang on to Mr. Pello. Come on. Go we'll hold on to that thing. Okay? Morning is, now God requires... Now imagine this, if we were going to follow what the Bible says, then we need to get up at 3 in the morning. We need to get up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning when God comes down. Right? Some people want to talk about how they have a prayer life. Well, try it at that time in the morning. You may get away with it once or twice, but if you do it every day, and it's because it said that God comes down during these times. Okay? And now, if it's a special time, if it is His month, and the requirements, amen, are to the leaders and to the people to be faithful to him. You see, that's why we teach of what we teach amen. on being a leader and requirements. That you have to be prayed up. You have to be prepared for what? Warfare, for this, for that. But you must be prepared for God. Amen. I said you must be prepared, prepare your life to hear from God. Yeah. Amen. And so Numbers chapter 29, I'm just going to use this as a, uh, just a small uh, uh, opening, amen. It says, and now on the seventh month of the first day of the month, uh, you shall have a holy convocation and no, do no customary work. For you, it is the, it's for, for you, it is the day of the blowing of the trumpet. My Bible says the blowing of the shofar. Can I get an amen? amen? And you shall offer a burnt offering as a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. Amen. We're going to stop right there. Father, I pray, Lord God, this evening, Lord God, that you speak within to our hearts and in our minds. Father God, this is a time, Lord God, that the church needs to be alive and be awake, Father. I pray, Lord God, tonight, Lord God, you touch our lives this evening, Lord God. Continue to bless us tonight, Lord God, as we Wake up our spirits, Lord God. Let us be prepared, Lord God, for whatever is going to take place. Bring us to salvation, to Shuba, repentance tonight. Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to be in this place and to touch, uh, touch our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Not many people, amen. How many pe not many people, amen, love to do what they're doing right now in their lives. You may, how many ever got a job, amen, and you're happy with it, like, oh, I got a job, and you're satisfied with it. But after a while, what happens to it? It gets bored. Are you here? Amen. Not many people love what they do right now. You may love, amen, it's like, you know, you know, it's mar like marriage. You know, I want to get married, so excited. The day is coming for marriage. Amen, and you're so excited to spend the rest of your life with each other. And it's going to be different. My marriage is going to be different. It's not going to be like... It's going to be different. And reality comes in. Can I get an amen? amen? So life has its twists and turns. Jobs, amen, have twists and turns. You like, you dislike. Are you here? Amen. Not many like what they do in life. But when we're thinking about what God has called this people to do, he's called this generation, amen, out of the wilderness, out of Egypt, and called them in to be a kingdom of priests, that they were going to establish their lives to reach an entire universe. And they were going to be holy, and they are special. They're the apple of his eyes, and he adored these people. He heard their cries in Egypt, amen, the taskmasters. Amen. And all that they went through in their lives. Amen. And God loved these men and women. And the Lord called him, amen, his special people. Amen. And their jobs was to help others. Moses was called out of a, out of a million and some people. Moses was called, amen, out of the midst, not in Egypt, not anywhere, but in the wilderness. And in the wilderness is where God creates you. God moves. Are you here? He had a job just like you and I did. Amen. He was a sheep herder. He did all those types of things in life. But his goal in life was to help others. 
Saving souls would be his commission, helping the kingdom of God to build, amen. This was a wake-up call for him. Can I get an amen? I remember the story. He was in the wilderness, amen. And, the, and the, he, he began to see the burning bush. Can I get an amen? And God was going to show him, amen, what to do with his life. God, amen, wants us to serve him. If anything, we're, you know, don't worry about the rapture. Don't worry about the catching away. Because people get caught up, amen. Is it going to happen this year? Be ready. I said, be ready. Amen. Well, be ready. We get, there you go. Well, praise God. Don't worry about nothing. But until then, we are to serve. I said, we are to serve. Serve who? Serve the church, serve each other. Save souls in the world. Oh, you hear me today. This is the call of God. We are to serve him, serve God, love God, love what he does, and to touch lives. Amen. Now is the time, amen, that God is trying to open our eyes to his word. God is trying to show us, amen, different things in our lives today. He's trying to show us, amen, the Torah is not dead. It's well alive. Amen. I said the Torah is alive. It's alive because it's in Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in the word was the, the word was in God in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And God in the tabernacle, he tabernacled amongst us. He walked amongst us in the sea of Galilee. He went out, amen, and saved souls. He went out to do the Father's will. Amen. What does he want for the church to do? It's time to wake up. It's time to get alive. Amen. It's time to receive the Holy Ghost in your heart. Amen. Get a hold of Jesus in your life today. Amen. Bring me back from death to life. And this is exactly what God wants to do. Somebody say amen today. Amen. You and I have to understand because tragedy has to happen. All these things, amen, as we talked about, amen, that Jesus said, women of war, all these things have to happen. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But if revival is going to happen, amen, there has to be this thing called the falling away, the apostasy. A lot of people don't even, because you can be filled of apostasy. There has been apostasy in this church. There has been apostasy in this world. That means, amen, that people are falling away and giving up. Don't tell me that you have not contemplated walking away. Don't tell me that in your soul, amen, you thought about going somewhere out or finding a different God that fits your purpose. Are you here today? Apostasy is everywhere. Apostasy is in your soul. It's in your life. And you better repent. Can I get an amen? And you better repent. Because what apostasy is, it's for rebellious people. The rebellious people, amen, who think they have it all together and these kind of messes don't pertain to them. Amen. Hello. Amen. And when you don't wake up from this stuff, you will fall away. If your eyes are not open, amen, to what is happening right now, to what you see right now, looking amongst each other in your life right now, amen. If my wife would turn to me and say, are you saved? She was asking a good question. Hello. Hello. I'm not offended. You may be offended. I'm not. Because it's her right to ask me, are you saved? Because you have to understand what that means. What does it mean to be saved? If we asked you a question, amen, are you saved? Then that means what's going on in your life? How's your conduct? You're falling asleep. You're like falling away. You're, you're fault because your lifestyle is not matching what the word says. And this is what the show part is all about. It's a wake up call. I said it's a wake up call. It is time. Amen. Time to understand. Amen. This is a season of God. Oh, if you can't feel it. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost at times. Amen. And in and, and Second Chronicles chapter 16, amen, the Bible says, amen, for the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, amen, and he protects those who are his, those who are loyal to him. If you're loyal to God, amen, if you're loyal to each other, what good is that? What good is that? I can't save you. You're just loyal to me and not to God. What good is that? I didn't die on the cross for you. 
Are you here? But if you're loyal to Christ, that starts first. So somebody asked you a question, amen, and my wife or anybody, my pastor said, are you saved, brother? It's a wake-up call. Amen. It's a wake-up call. Amen. It's time to search this. Yes, oh, the 10 days of the books that are opening up, amen, you better be awake. Yes, amen. Oh, because life and death are before you. Amen. amen. I've seen too many guys, you've seen yes. too many guys in this program yes, die. You know people right now are in their deathbed. Where are their souls right now? Oh, this is a wake-up call. Oh, should I blow my chauffeur? Or are you hearing me tonight? Oh, do I got to wake somebody up? Amen. Because what's happening, amen, is that God is calling every believer to wake up and to be sober-minded. Are you sober-minded? Are you aware of where, what season we're in? Are you well aware of that? And does it matter to you? I do not expect everybody to understand this because it's complicated, because it doesn't fit your program. Are you here? But think about where you come out of. You came out of broken lives. Remember, amen, when all this made sense to you. Remember, amen, when you were strung out, amen. Amen. On the floor looking for a piece of rock somewhere. Amen. You're on a sh you're looking out for the shadow monster somewhere. Amen. Open that blind every five minutes. You know what time it is. Can I get an amen? You, you ladies understand what a beat down is when somebody slaps you around. Amen. For a while. You know the relationships you've been through and gone through. Amen. You know what children are you done to your children? How you forsook them? How you do that? You were broken. I said you were broken and everything made sense when you found Christ when you got saved it made sense I said when you are saved when you said Lord God I need Jesus right now amen I need someone to teach me something amen and all of a sudden it was revival time it was a time of blessing amen you had a wake up call you heard the sound of remember when you could hear God it was a wake up call it was a sound for you. Amen. Your eyes are opening. You see what's going on. Your lives were broken. Amen. And that brokenness led to, led to repentance. Amen. It leads you, amen, to knowing who Christ is. Yes. Young true. Amen. That word is simple, amen, which I had to understand. It means it's alarm. Wake up. You need a shaking in your life. You know how I mean, somebody just straight knocked out. Oh, Josiah sleep, and you can't wake that dude up. No, pee, 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 nobody. No, wake up! Hello. My wife says when I'm out, that not even. Shh. That's it. It's over. Yeah. Because I could be over here screaming and yelling for help. And yeah. I blame it on, I put the worship on, babe, and yes, do. Can I get an alarm? Wake up. Are you here? Amen. Wake up because God gave us a perfect will. Amen. And we are to wake up others. Yes, amen. This is what this is about, the sound. Amen of that shofar. Amen, Lord. amen. We're going to hear a little bit more. Amen. Exactly what God is doing in our lives because in the end it leads to what? The last trump. How we understand the last trump? Oh, I found out some stuff that would blow you away. Well, Paul said about the last trumpet in my theology. I was studied this the last trumpet and I... Come on, man. Unless you understand God spoke to this Jewish nation. Are you here? Amen. And he speaks to us today. Amen. Because the last trumpet. Comes with a shout. Hello. Amen. Oh that was a perfect time to do what? Shout. Shout it out. <laughs> I said the last trump comes with what? Shout. shout. 
See, I think, amen, that you've been around me long enough, long enough to know I love shouting. Yeah. I said, I love shouting. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't like the city. I can't. If I heard somebody else preach, amen, and they're in the fuck. Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Bring it on. Bring it on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But think about the shout. The shout comes, amen, as because the power of the sound of shore of the so far has power, amen, enough, amen, to shake the ground. Oh, in Exodus chapter 19, amen, we find, amen, Moses, God, amen, said, I am going to do something today. I said, I'm going to, then God, amen, brought his people out of Egypt. And he sets them up, amen. And when God, amen, after the third month, amen, which is Pentecost, brings them out, amen, from Egypt, it's always, God always begins to move on his feast days. Can I get an amen? amen? He always wants to move, amen, on his feast days, amen. The sound of the shofar was going to be plain. It was going to be simple, amen. And when the people begin to hear it, they hear the voice of God. And it comes thunderous. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, if you want to hear from God, you better get your knees straight. Amen. Can I get an amen? And so... In, there is power in the sound of the shofar, and we hear it where? First at Sinai. You know, God tells the Jesus, excuse me, God tells the people, amen, in chapter 19, he says, get them ready. You see, this is a time where you need to prepare yourself. Are you here? This is a time for you, amen. If you have broken yourself, if you have sinned against your loved one, if you have done something wrong to each other, amen, if you, amen, are mad and bitter at somebody, you need to get that right. Yeah. You need to repent tonight. Amen. You need to surrender to God. I don't care. Well, I've been mad at this. You know, I hear certain names and I get mad. I say, Lord, get that out of me. Yes, amen. Get that out of me. I think, I think, I think it does, you know, God does it to me on purpose. Are you hear? I, yeah. I hear a certain. You mentioned that I could be happy. You hear a certain name. Like, <laughs> Why did you say that name? <laughs> and then all the. Bleh. Come on, I'm not the only one. Come on, get in here with me. Come on, get in. Come on, this is a big circle. Jump on in. Amen. Come on, that's you too. Yes, amen. But I don't want to be that way. Right. So the Lord says, prepare yourselves. Yes, Are you here? Yes. Prepare yourself. God told Moses, you tell these people to concentrate them fast, amen. Get ready. Wash their clothes. Do this, do that. I am about to come down on this certain day, amen. I'm about to show up, amen. You see, what we want today, I would love for Jesus to show up, amen. But he's not going to show up yet, amen, until the time is right, amen. So what do we want this morning, this evening, amen? I want the Holy Ghost to be in here. I want the Spirit of God, amen. Just breathe your breath upon our lives today. I don't care if you say amen, I'll say it to myself, amen. amen. I want to hear the fire of God. I want to see the Spirit of God move, amen. Because when the Spirit of God begins to move, there's healing power, amen. You may not want to feel the healing, amen, but God want to touch you, amen. But you need to repent today. You need to prepare yourself. You need to get right, amen. Time to forgive some brothers and sisters tonight, amen. Let, let, don't worry about the past, amen. You can't change the past, amen. What happened five Five days ago is a history, amen. What's going to happen today, amen, makes a difference a difference for tomorrow. Somebody need to wake up right now, amen. Because, you know, there's too many complaints about being sick. There's too many complaints, amen, about this is going on, that's going on, amen. Look at all this, amen. Look what's happened to me. I feel burdened. I feel that. Well, give all that and prepare yourself to meet God. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight, amen. But he goes on. Let me just give you this. Exodus 19, 19. Amen. He tells the people, amen, to be prepared. Amen. And then the Bible says to you and I, amen, that in the morning, amen, there was a thundering lightning, amen, and a thick cloud on the mountain, verse 17, and the sound of the shofar, amen, was very loud, and all the people who were in the camp, amen, trembled. Oh, you're not hearing me today. What a sight that must have been. They want to take a ride. Amen. Come with me. Amen. Oh, man. Imagine that you're going 
Amen. God says, prepare yourself. And all these people fast. And all these people do what's right. Amen. And God says, don't go as far as the mountain. Amen. Don't step right here. Because this is holy ground. If you step there, amen, you cross that line, my angels are going to hit you with some, some, some arrows. Amen. Can you imagine that? Amen. He goes in there. Oh, there. What happened to Charlie? Amen. What happened to Charlie there? Amen. He got hit by an arrow. Amen. Where did that, where did that come from? God got mad. Well, pull him up. Pull him up. Pull him up. <laughs> the rest of you guys don't pass this line because God gets mad if you cross that line. Are you here? And you always got the ones, the stubborn ones, you think, well, I got it all together. <laughs> Philip, I told you not to do that. Get over here. Come on. Come on. You're hurt. You're hurt. Church people, amen. Church people don't care. I'll cross the line. I don't care who got it. Pop. There you go. <laughs> Keep messing with God. He'll throw more air. I got all day to do this. Hello. You got that archangel. That's why he is the archangel. Hello. Don't mess with God's angels. Are you here? Oh, but this is what the Bible says. Amen. When they heard it, and Moses brought the people of the camp of the meeting, amen, and they stood. Now, the mountain at Sinai was completely in smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it with fire and smoke. And the set, can you imagine that? Wow. Oh, you're talking about a light show? Hallelujah. God showed up. <laughs> Woo! The fog starts coming up. <laughs> God is here. Come on. Smoke fills everywhere. Thundering lightning. You got a light show going on. <laughs> Is there and the people are like, wow. And Moses is just chilling in the middle of all that. Come on! No, oh, you're gonna pass the line. God will shoot us. But you're Moses. Can you imagine all that? Man, it's just right there, and everybody, and everybody, and oh what? All the people are scared. I'm not scared of God. I fear him in a, in a reverence way. Are you afraid of him? Are you afraid of him when you hear rapture, when you hear God is coming, God's about to move, and God wants to do this and bring, you know, what, what, is it fear people to say, you know what, you can be healed right now if you believe? Yes, amen. Amen? Because why? If you're, if you're healed, they'll, oh my gosh, they're going to take my social security away. <laughs> Are you here? Oh, if, 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 if God comes right now, there goes, uh, how am I going to get to work tomorrow? Come on, man. Who cares about that? Live in the moment. Let God heal you. No, what about this? Oh, my gosh. They'll find out on me. I'm worried about a few bucks. You're with the, with the king of Wall Street. Can I get a name? He, he is beyond all that measure. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. Can I get an amen? But God answers these people. Amen. And when the blast of the trumpet, the song, and the blast of the shofar, sounded long, became louder and louder, and Moses spoke to God, and what they were hearing, the sound of the shofar, but it was the voice of God. Are you here? That's why Moses said, it's God, man! They can hear, and Moses, and it's God talking to them. Tell them to come closer. Tell them to get over here, amen. And they're all like, and Moses is like, come Great. I'm talking about being spiritually veiled. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a new creature in Christ. Amen. I'm talking about being filled. And now you got the language with God. All of a sudden you're praising the Lord. You're singing hallelujah. Amen. You got a different language. Supernatural is going on. And what did people do? Ah! It's too scary. And they heard the shofar, but it was God answering in his voice. You see, that's hard to understand. You and I, we hear, if you hear the when I blow the shofar, I hear God. I hear my spirit man wakes up. It brings life. 
It gets me ready. Hello. It prepares us for the day. Amen. And when you hear him and releases the power of God's word in your life, you want to know what Pastor Joe, what's, how do you know all this stuff? You tap into the power of God. How do you know, amen? You listen, you read, dig deep under, amen. Bring your spiritual shovel with you. Can I get an amen? And when you get the power and you believe, amen, I believe. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe, amen, who never see, but they believe. I've never seen Jesus, but I feel him, I touch him, but I know he's here. What can you say? God takes care of us. There's not a need that God has not met. He is the great Elohim. Can I get an amen? All things that he does, amen, I can't even imagine or begin to understand but, the, but when it releases the power of his word in your life, it makes a 100% difference. Yes. Amen. You have a different attitude, a different walk. Amen. It's not a self-righteous thing. You see people in a different light. Yes, amen. You see how they, oh my gosh, they need my help. Yes, amen. We, you all, Moses, we need you. No, you need God. Yes, Why is it so hard for people to understand that? The, he had the awe experience. Amen. Moses was standing in the midst where God was at, and every and Moses was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. The awe, all ex. I mean, come on! I mean, I can whoa! I can feel. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Whoa! I'm praying. Yeah, I'm here. Da, 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 da. My body's yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Nobody's here. But myself. Woo! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I might as well go outside and touch somebody and get electrocuted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh you hearing me today. Yeah. Yeah. Feel it. The power. Yeah. The power of the Osa. Remember the Osa? Yeah. Oh, when the Osa gets a hold of you, amen. Because what is it? It's God's power. And it teaches you the Oza is the insight. It is what the understanding of the Spirit of God even wants you to see, amen. Not for you, but for God. It is an experience that Moses had. Moses had a conversation with the Father. Can you picture that? Can you see that? I can see that. I can see that because I experienced having that conversation with the Father. What can you tell your father? You know, the Bible says, ask will be given and, 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 and seek and you shall find. Father, I need this. I need you. God already knows you need a car, you need a house, you need a wife, you need this, you need that. The list is out. This is between God and you now. Can I get an amen? amen? And when you have that spiritual Understanding, you have a spiritual sense of things. Are you here? You have a spiritual, you know, people call it a gut feeling, an emotion. Amen. I feel when someone says, you know, I talk, I feel like my pastor, I'm going through something. He he will call me. Are you okay? Is this that? I need a call. I need to talk to you. today. He called me, brother. Are you okay? You all right? Yeah, pastor, I'm fine. Really, you're not. Hello. Yeah. yeah. We don't tell pastor everything, but really he knows the sense of the understanding. Yeah. 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 And God gave that to Moses. Yeah. He had a sense of presence. Yeah. When you have the sense of knowing him and that God is here to fulfill your destiny, like why am I drawn back to come back to this place? Why am I drawn all the time? Well, it's not Pastor Joel or, or, or the building. It's God. That's right. Amen. Yes. It's the awe moment of your life. It's the experience that God wants to touch you. We're just vessels. We're just vehicles. That's it. But it's God who wants to reach you. Are you here today? God brought them out of Egypt, out of sin. What is he bringing us out of sin? You know, we're the last brothers and sisters. We're the nobodies. Are you here? So you mentioned Christian outreach to all these goody goodies. Like, yeah. <laughs> Hello? I don't care. 
Because we got power. Yeah. Are you here? He brought them to Sinai. And when he brought them to Sinai, God came with a contract. Okay, you want to feel my honest. And you want to feel my goodness. And you want my mercy. In Exodus chapter 20, amen, God brings what we call the Ten Commandments. The do's and the don'ts. Say amen. 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 Because everybody fights that. You know what people say? The law is not longer. The law. This is the basic Ten Commandments of God. And the number one thing is not to have an idol. Amen. To honor him. To love him. And to love your neighbor as yourself. I'll just give you a few. But the Bible says in verse 18, Now all the people witnessed the thundering, the flashing, amen, the lightning and the flash, and the sound of the shofar, and the mountain smoke. And when the people saw that they trembled and stood far off. And they said to Moses, amen, you speak with us. We will not hear, but let not God speak, lest we die. This is the problem with people today. You see, we're, we, we shouldn't be waiting for a rapture. We should be waiting for God. Amen. Hello. Amen. I want to hear from the Father. I want to hear God say, this is my son Jesus. You cry to him. Because there's only one way through the Father. is through Christ Jesus. Amen. Are you here today? Amen. And so, what pe church people don't realize, amen, and a lot of People will say this. Well, I'll be in the rapture. I'm the chosen one. Well, I can't wait till the day comes that we all go with the Lord. Right? And then they're snooty. Hello? Ew. Did you see that man, what he just did? Ew. Hello? Very self-righteous and our church is way prettier than this one. Hello? Thomas, what do you think, Thomas? <laughs> well, I don't know, but I'm right now. I'll let you know in a second when I hear the music roar and the music come. And if they start yelling like they do and carry on, I will walk out of this place because it's dirty in my spirit. <laughs> Uppity. Uh, come on. Are you here? Amen. Because in today's church thinking, amen, everybody believes they are the chosen ones. But God only speaks. Amen. To his faithful ones. Amen. I said God only speaks to his faithful ones. Amen. I fear when people say God said this to me. Because they don't know what they're saying. Right. Are you here? When he, how many of you ever said, well God said this to me. Oh, he talked to you. When did you get saved? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, God spoke with a donkey. Okay, I want to see who that word. And not good when you say donkey in another way. Can I get an amen? You want to be a donkey? Hello? He'll come to you in a second. Hello? The chauffeur blast reveals God's voice. Okay? You don't have to be a rabbi. You don't have to be a pastor. You have to love Jesus. Amen. You have to, with all your soul, Amen. with all your heart, Amen. you do unto Him. You want application in your life. Try it. Amen. Bless your life. Amen. Invest. Amen. If you're afraid, you know, people invest in a lot of things except the things of God. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. Expect the church to do everything for you. Come on. Come on. Hello? You can't expect the church to do everything for you. There are some ministries that want to do that. Hello? David was sharing me today about how one individual, amen, yeah, yeah, if we had all the resources, come on, church, pay me your money, and I'll treat you to lunch with your money. <laughs> Hello? Come on. <laughs> Who's a dolphin now? <laughs> Careful what people say these things. God said. You know, Job had that issue. Remember Job? Job chapter 38, amen. Job, amen, was going through all kinds of issues in his life. And from chapter, I think it's chapter 35 to 38, all he's doing is whining and complaining. 
Job is, oh man, I'm full of these sores. I've got all these issues. My wife don't like me. I lost my children. I did this. You know? I shouldn't complain, but guess what? I'm going to complain in it. You got to be careful when people say, I'm not complaining, but I'm complaining. Can I get an amen? Because good church people are good to that. It's not complaining. It's called releasing. Releasing. Releasing on everybody. Hello. Releasing. You know, I'm going to tell you my problems. I'm going to give it to you, amen, because maybe you will pray for me, and you will do that for me, and everybody will do for me, and everybody, because why? I don't know how to do it myself. I don't know how to do it myself. You serve the same God! So Job has got caught up, because if Job did that, amen, why not? If Job did it, I couldn't do it. Hello! But Job goes on and on and on. He questions God, says this to God, blah, 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 for the next three chapters, hello? And then God... All of a sudden, the Bible says in chapter uh, chapter 38, verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of a world, a whirlwind. A f starts moving around, amen. Can you imagine that all of a sudden the wind starts blowing? Like, ah, what's going on right here? Oh, this is what killed my kid. But you're not moving and everything else is flying around you. And all of a sudden, amen, you hear God. God says, amen, Who is this who darkens my counsel by his words without knowledge? Come on, you think you know everything? Come on now. Yeah. No. <laughs> Come on, brother. You just said, well, the Bible says this. Yeah. <laughs> Who darkens my counsel without knowledge? Come on. Who do you think you are? God says that. Come on. Be careful yeah. while the Bible says. Be careful. It's good to throw scripture at somebody, but not apply it yourself. Hello. We can do this all day long. I'll tell you what the Bible says, and you'll tell me your problems. I'll tell you what the Bible says, and you'll still tell me your problems. But God says, he looks at both of us and says, who is this who darkens my counsel without knowledge? Are you here? I don't want to. I'd be very careful. I'm very careful to say when God said something. Are you here? Very careful to quote a scripture. I'm very careful. I would be very, especially right now. Hello. Tippy toe. Tippy toe. Hello. Yeah, be careful. God's listening. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 32 says, Oh heavens, let your let hear your voice. And he might instruct you. Oh earth, he has shown you the, his great fire. And you had heard his word in the midst of that fire. God wants to speak to his people and it's coming thunderous. I said it comes thunderous. Oh, we're just a vehicle. We have no thunder. We have no nothing. Amen. Amen? But it's the Word of God that has power. Amen. It's the Word of God that has the insight. Amen? There are things in the Bible, amen? You'll say, well, I can't see it. I don't know where it's at. It's there. That's the oza. That is the power. Are you here? Amen. In Revelation chapter 1, this is what he says, And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as a shofar. Can you imagine that? What did Moses hear? A loud voice. What did the people, they heard the shofar. It was the voice of God. Amen. God speaks right now through his shofar. Amen. Tomorrow evening, amen, they're going to blow the shofar. Tomorrow evening, amen, they're going to get up, amen, and then Israel, amen. And something special is going to happen. I said something special is going to happen. They're going to do something they haven't did in years. They're going to blow the last, as they call it, the last trump. Amen. They're going to blow it, amen, on Mount Zion. See, a lot of you like, and? So uh, they came to the mountain, they blew the horn. <laughs> what does that mean? Mount Zion. Is you know where the dome of the rock? 
It's on top, right there, that is a no-no. They haven't done that, amen, since the beginning when they started blowing the shofar. Thousands of years. They would do it every season in Jerusalem. And they haven't done it since, since the days of Jesus. Are you here? And they're going to do it this year. Everybody said, ah. Come on, say it with me. Ah. You see, we don't realize, amen. You see, what does that mean to us? We get into the last trumpet, it's going to mean a lot. Psalms 159 says this, amen. Praise, O oh God, in his sanctuary. Praise him, amen, in his mighty ferment, amen. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him in the sound of the shofar. Amen. Praise him, amen, in the lute, in the sharp, amen, the harp, amen. amen. Praise him, amen, in the tremble, in the dance. Amen. Praise him, amen, with instruments, with the flutes. Praise him with a loud cymbal, amen, and the cymbals that crashed. Let everything be presented before the Lord his God, amen. This is where you got to give the Lord praise tonight. I said give the Lord praise tonight. Because the sound of the short bar, amen, been a time of worship. A time. What does God desire most anything in your life, amen, is to your the worship your God with all your heart, with all your mind, amen, all your problems. Don't focus on your problems, amen. Focus your eyes on praising God. I said give the Lord praise tonight. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a time of worshiping. This is Rosh Hashanah. Come on, church. It is a time of praise and worship. 
because God, we heard the sound of the shofar. It is a time of, of honoring your God. You've got to believe the truth when the Bible teaches these things. God has power. You know, the shofar does these few things. Let me just throw, roll these by. It announced the festivals. You would never learn about the festivals in your entire life. Are you here? The sound of the shofar prepares the way for God. Leviticus, Leviticus 23 says, sound the shofar. This is my seasons. This is God's time. Can I get an amen? amen? And if you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you, you honor his time. Amen. It is a time of warning from danger. Things are going to get worse. Judgment is going to come. Judgment is going to come upon this earth. You think COVID's bad, it's going to get worse. This is the wake-up call. It's calling the church together for a meeting. The gathering together, the in-gathering. It's an alarming man that the king is on his way. Amen. Are you here? These are the things that the shofar does. It awakes, it shows. You know what the shofar blasts in, Ju in Judaism represents? Amen? The day of creation. Day of atonement, according to the scriptures, amen, or this is what Jewish people believe, amen, was the day that God created the heavens and the earth. And it didn't sound without the blast. When they would sound the blast of the shofar, everybody knew on the day of atonement, the sound went out. This represented God's creation. Everybody said, well, what about Adam and Eve? What? That's the day the earth was formed. Are you here? All these things that you and I prepares our life for, there are many, many other Jewish beliefs, and you would never learn them in your entire life. Because people can care less about the feast. Amen. But if you look at Revelations, it's all about the feast. Amen. Are you here? What did I give you? Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read this real quick. Therefore he says, awake you sleepy, arise from the dead. Christ will give you the light. What is lacking in your walk right now? What is lacking in your life? You have been somber, sleeping. You've been hibernating, quarantined. Can I get an amen? Yes, amen. Locked up. Yes, amen. Put away. It is a time to wake up. Yes. Why the Bible says, amen, Paul says this, amen. The sound of the sofa, walk circumspect. What? Knowing the time for the days are what? Redeeming the time for the days are what? Evil. How much more evil can we get? How many have a few more minutes? Can I get an amen? amen. Because... The blast of the shofar, Yom Turum, and then it's associated with the coming of the Lord. Was it a, it's the resurrection of the dead with the coming of the Messiah. Right now, right now, yes. they've been announcing, amen, the Jewish Messiah is about, they're, they're going to show him. I don't know if that's true or not, but we better be ready. Amen. Are you here? Their Messiah is about to come out. They had a big meeting about that. There again, what? Well, so what? Their Messiah is going to be have over. Can I get an amen? amen? But many will never understand this until you follow what the scriptures talks about. Amen. amen. When it talks about the false Messiah, anti-Messiah. Can I get an amen? amen. We know him as what? Antichrist. Amen. So the shofar, amen. Is, as I said, amen, it's getting ready to blow. According to uh, the rabbis, amen, they teach the sound of the shofar, amen, in the last days. That they, now, this is rabbi, this is Orthodox Jews' belief. That in the last days, graves will open up and the dead will rise first. Once their Messiah, amen, shows up, all this is about to happen. Are you here? They have, they're, they're believing, amen, in a messianic leadership coming in. Amen? And all these souls, things will happen, and the kingdom of God is about to show up. 
Once the Messiah is here, we are in the millennial reigns. They believe the same things that you hear today. And you and I have to understand this. This starts, amen, with the sound of the shofar. Why is this important for you and I? Who are we waiting for? You want to go to heaven or you want Jesus to come to earth? Come to earth, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, if we know that it just defeats all the rapture study and oh my gosh, it just draw confusion. Not if you're in heaven. You can care less who's right or who's wrong. I get an amen. I say, can I get an amen? amen. Reminds you and I, as a t there's going to happen. We see, I'm not trying to give you a false hope, amen, that the only things are going to get bad. They are going to get bad. But guess what? Revival is going to break out of this. It's supernatural. Spirit is going to break out. Are you here? God, amen, is going to breathe his spirit. Now, when I say the revival is going to wake up, amen, can you imagine, amen, all of a sudden, people who will turn their hearts from tradition onto the true God. Can I get an amen? When they turn their hearts and they'll be praying, I want to pray to the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, amen, the God of Isaac, amen. I want to pray to Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me tonight? All these things that we see happening in our society, in our world, man, church world's all divided in all different ways, but one day, amen, there's going to be a revival that's going to be so powerful, it's going to sweep the world, amen, and people are going to run to and fro, and they're, you know, everybody outside, amen, not going to know what's going on. Amen. And people will be dancing in the aisles. Amen. Revival will be taking place. Amen. I don't think you will know what to do, but God is preparing us for that time. I said, God is preparing us for that time. Amen. It's time to wake up. Amen. Time to understand. Amen. That God wants to breathe His Spirit upon your life. Be ready. Be ready, church. Let me end it. We'll, we'll close with this. First Corinthians chapter 15. Now I've read this many, many times. Okay, I'm certain most of you have. But Paul says this, amen. Behold, amen, I tell you, a mystery. I mean, like mysteries. Amen. amen. It's not kind of a mystery you may think. Oh, who died? Who did this? Oh, my gosh. Did that? The, the butler did it? Did that? Okay. Mr. Mr. Green in the, in the conservatory with a knife. That's really old, huh? You guys are like, what the heck is that? It's called Clue. Yeah. <laughs> We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment of a twinkling of the eye at the last Amen. trump. For the last trump will sound. This is what Paul said. Paul was not introducing something new like a lot of church traditions want you to believe. This is not a new doctrine. This is something that's been around from the rabbis from the time of Moses all the way to the end. Are you following me so far? I'm going to say amen. amen. Because what Paul is doing, he's reaffirming something that was taught to him from the other rabbis of his time of El and goes all the way back, amen, from way back from the prophetic times of Elijah. Hello. That there will be a catching away, as we call it. And in moments of the twinkle, this was brought down from him to Paul, amen. So he told the Corinthian church. Are you here today? Amen. And he taught something from the rabbis that were written years and years. And his spirit and God confirmed it with him. Are you here? Because what does God desire? Let me tell you something how God, what God wants from us. God promised something that we're experiencing right now. Redemption. Restoration. And resurrection. Are you here? He's restoring your life. Amen. You were worth nothing. Now you're worth everything. He's bringing everything back. Come on, you can. Come on, somebody can testify tonight. What is he doing? He's bringing back. He's bringing back. Come on, somebody say. He's restoring that relationship back in your life. These are the things, Amen. That we're right now. Christians want to be raised up into heaven and still sin. But God wants to uh, call up his faithful believers. Amen. Are you here today? And Christians today need to, I, I, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 
I want to be with Jesus tonight. How many want to be with Jesus? How many are willing to risk, amen, not repenting tonight? Oh, don't be that last one. Remember the song that Jeremy said? Yeah. I wish we all been ready. Oh, you need to be ready. I said you need to be ready. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a clap off for tonight. Amen. As we bow our heads tonight, I want to encourage you. Whatever troubles you may have or whatever's going on in your life, nothing's bigger and nothing's greater than what God has for your life. He's in charge of all things. He desires for you to come here and make things right of your life. Let's focus, amen. Just like the early church, they live like Jesus was to come back tomorrow. We tonight live in a certain time, in a certain place. We live it right now. Amen. Tomorrow, amen, the sound of the shofar will happen. Their time, amen, 6 o'clock, their time. Eight hours, amen, from our time, they're ahead of us. And the sound of the shofar will blast. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear from God? Are you ready, amen? It may be that moment, it may be transferred, amen, in a twinkle in an eye. I don't know. Only God knows your heart this evening. Mm. God knows what's in your life right now. You're far from the Lord. You have been far from God. You, you, may, you may think that you don't deserve Him, amen. We all have felt that way some point. This is a time of restoration. This is a time, amen, where you need to confess Him. Remove all the things of your heart tonight. You want to be healed, amen? Let Jesus touch you. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and I pray for those, Lord God, who struggle, Lord God, with your word. Struggle with belief, Father. Lord, we ask for your holiness tonight. Lord, as you come down to Moses and to the people, have you called, Lord God, your people, Lord God, to be faithful? Has the shofar blast? Let us hear your voice, Lord God. Lord, as you look to the faithful, Lord God. Lord, I pray tonight for your, your healing power, Lord God, on lives, restoration tonight.
days, amen, God opens these books. Something that we've never learned in the church before. But I honestly got to say that. I've heard of my pastor preach, amen, that God opens the books and he has an order. Amen. And a day will come when we stand before him in judgment. But when you learn, amen, that God opens at a certain time of the season, that God opens these books in heaven. And this is an opportunity for everybody to make things right. Because those books have between life and death. You do not know when your hour is up. God knows. And if you don't make things right in your life, he gives you this time of repentance. Of not just saying, I'm sorry. It's making it right. You have failed him. I mean, no, we all failed God. We have messed up. This entire church world is, is a mess. It's a mess. And we're part of that. We're part of that because how we judge one another, how we look at one another, and all the criticisms and think that's why repentance is important. Amen. It's one thing that me and my wife understand is true repentance. Because you know what? I'm not you I stand God by myself just like you will. But if I have an opportunity to get his attention, and if he says this is the hour, I'm gonna do that. Come on. I'll believe whatever the Bible says to whatever a man says. I'll believe the Bible first. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? How many believe that tonight? Yeah. Oh, there's power in the world. Yeah. So don't forget we'll be here Sunday morning. Amen. It's the beginning, amen, of the days of all. Amen. And the days of, uh, you know, it's all about making our hearts right with the Lord tonight. You know, amen. I, I just want to let you know, repent. Right. Tomorrow's the time. Okay. I don't know. Rapture could happen. Last trump, it could blow. Tomorrow, remember, 6 o'clock tomorrow. That is 10 o'clock our time. A lot of you will be at work and not even care. Right? But if a, a change in the atmosphere happens, don't even bother calling me. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're prepared enough, and you can hear what God say, whether it happens or it doesn't happen, we're still going to be here Sunday morning to serve. Can I get an amen? amen? So praise God. I hope you're encouraged tonight. Hang in there, amen. Let us our hearts be better. Never stop praying for your families. Amen. amen. Uh, do me a favor tonight. Keep my granddaughter in prayer. Her name is Nini. Amen. Just say a little prayer for her. She's sick right now. And we just want to lift her up tonight. Amen. Just have the Lord bless her little life. Amen. She's what? 13? Like that. Amen. So let's just pray for her. Amen. Okay. And we found some things out of her sickness. Amen. So just keep her in your prayers. Amen. And just ask the Lord to bless her. Amen. So let's be dismissed. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, let your holy word, Lord God, just ch touch our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Let's bring revelation, bring understanding. Most of all, Lord God, let us hear the sound of the shofar in our lives. Lord, the power that comes from it is through your voice and through your word, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, this will be awakening. This will be a wake-up call, Lord God, for many of us, Lord God. Lord God, that this church stands here, Lord God, and open arms, Lord God, for all those come here, Lord God. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that not to judge one another, Lord God, but to keep you in mind, Lord God, you're in charge of all things. I ask for your blessing tonight. Bless your people, Lord God, with the peace and the shalom of their lives, Lord God, as we make our way home, Lord God. Let us have a cleansed heart and a cleansed mind. Let us repent, Lord God. For the day is approaching, Lord God, that we put prepared, whether it happens or it doesn't. But let us be faithful unto you. We love you tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Amen. Amen.